We, we were, what, 1,500 miles away from Eric at that point. Everything we got, Eric slipped on. It's just the way it is. I'm a dirtbag. You're using that, aren't you? <laughs> yeah. Damn it. Tell them Large Marge sent you. We're here at MacFest again. Um, Hopefully it's going to be a little bit bigger, a little bit better, and uh, a lot of bit fun. This is our third MAGFest in a row, and of course, just like all the other MAGFests, the highlight of this is going to be hanging out with the boys once again. I love MacFest because it, it basically gets a chance for us to just hang out with all the retroware guys again. So MacFest is the retroware party essentially, so that's cool. Um, I'm really excited because I get to meet my Twitter crush, um, Ian, from the completely unnecessary podcast that Pat 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 Pat, Pat, Pat does. Meeting Ian from Stupid Pat's channel was uh, was awesome. I, I said I've always wanted to meet Ian. And me and Ian, I think, are going to bond both mentally and physically. But we, we, we'll see, I don't know. So Pat, like he always does at every convention, he brought a stash of doubles. He's coming to this convention with a lot of really rare and uncommon games on pretty much any system you can think of. Lucky for us, the convention hadn't started yet and we got dibs. I'm getting from Pat a Snow Brothers on NES. Really hard game to find. And it's actually a really good game on Nintendo. I got some wacky races from him. It won't, wasn't bro prices, but he was still hooking it up pretty good because he could have taken those games down on the floor and made way more money than he made off of us. For whatever reason, Pat just has rare and uncommon games rain into his, his, his panties, you know, whenever he walks through the flea market. And I don't know how that is or why that is. I guess the only explanation really is that San Diego flea markets are just like candy lands or something. I don't know. I got Jimmy Connors tennis. I got ALF on the master system, which is the one of the rarest games on the console. <laughs> It seems like every year there's less and less game vendors, which is less and less chance to catch someone slipping or for a hookup. There are a few booths here at MacFest that are offering um, fairly fair market value deals that um, actually for convention prices are okay. It's always nice when we get gifts though. I don't know if you have, if you have it, whatever, but you could always use two, I guess, you know what I mean? Uh, check it out. Let's see what it is. I think it's a little more up your alley anyway. Oh, look at that. I don't have one of these actually. Yeah, man. what you guys are doing. I watch the game chases, that's what keeps me collecting, dog. Otherwise, I'd have quit. It, it's awesome. It's one of those awesome things to have that I never did. It was way too expensive at the time when it came out. I could not afford it. I, I don't like that. Jay's um, undeserving. I like Tekken. If anybody should get free stuff around here, it should be me, because I'm a handsome one. Our collecting panel, well, hang on, I can't say R because Billy wasn't there. The collecting panel that I was on with Rue and Pat went really well. Um, probably because Billy wasn't there. Billy apparently had some kind of fucking headache or something. I got a migraine. You see, little known fact, I have back and neck problems. Progressively getting worse. Hours and hours and hours and hours and hours and hours and hours of editing will do that to you. Really? One of the side effects of having neck pain and neck problems is migraines. Some of these migraines might last three, four days. This one in particular has lasted me 24 straight hours. Take some fucking Excedrin and you fucking nut up and you go. 24 straight hours. Oh yeah, so not only did Billy miss the panel, stupid Melvoir walks in 20 minutes late. What, 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 I mean, what's going on? So, so it's a little past midnight at this point and I decided I was gonna, you know, actually try to enjoy myself instead of filming for these two chuckleheads. And I decided to go to the, uh, the arcade and play some games. And I had a good time for about an hour and an hour and a half or so. 
Now I started getting sleepy. Oh, that's what else that's, that's unusual. You wake up and you're. Do mind. You do mind. Be quiet. I'm trying to tell a story here, okay, right? Okay. He, he, okay. He, he was awake for an hour and a half, so of course he got sleepy. <laughs> I'm being human was amazing. They uh, played on the main stage. I think they were actually the the like highlight band. Have you ever seen those old TV footage and stuff and of the of the Beatles playing and you see a bunch of girls in the front and they're going oh they're screaming that was me. I felt like a groupie. I wanted to go up there and do the robot and I was kind of debating whether or not I should considering there was like security on both sides of the stage just waiting to tackle me if I tried something like that. Yeah, they were pretty badass. Uh, as usual, they were badass last year, badass this year. They'll be badass again next year. Travis got it made, man. I could sing. <laughs> the concert was great. I loved the concert. Man, those guys can play. Those guys are good. Yeah, I'm jealous of their handsomeness and their talent. It's always nice to it's, it's pretty bad when you discussed your own self. I know. Prime time on Saturday. Good stuff. Retroware TV Go. It's always um, really cool when somebody walks up to you with a big bag of goodies to give. And it's their way of just showing their appreciation, you know, for the videos and stuff. And, you know, anything at all that people decide to give us is always appreciated. Ryan gave us a painting that was us double dragging and we were kicking the shit out of Pat and stupid Eric. <laughs> it's too mean. That is, that is freaking awesome. Look at the Dongo and Melbourne up here. Who did that? Did you do that? Yeah, I grew up being to know. I still got some pain in my fingers. And, and anytime anyone busts on Eric and busts on Pat, yeah, day made. I don't know, baby. We should do that for a second. This is going on my wall, seriously. Uh, that shit's just great to me. <laughs> yes. Yes. All right. George. I already like this. So I get handed to me some Ninja Turtle magazines, and that's awesome. And I see Jay get handed a game in a pink little plastic thing. No way. No fucking. Are you serious? First thing in my head is this son of a bitch. We have some great fans. Jason from Canada. He gave us an action 52. Completely speechless. I'm completely speechless right now. <laughs> Don't happen often. I get handed a cart and I'm thinking, oh, well, dude, if he got action 52, what did I get? I open the thing up. Do you want to? Yes. Black and uh, green barrier. Where did you get these? Uh, buddy in uh, Cambridge, Ontario. Wow, yeah. that is, that is, I don't even know what to say. That is just freaking awesome. Dude, that's insane, man. <laughs> Dang, man, that's, I'm, I'm speechless, yeah, that's honestly. Why I, I wrote a Regina last year if you uh, had those two or not. Oh, you did? I was surprised she actually knew that I didn't. That is freaking awesome. I, I can't even like. Yeah, I mean, dude, that is. That's not something you expect, you know? I was speechless. Like, I couldn't understand. I didn't even know what to say, like, at that point. What do you say at this point? What do you say when somebody hands you an Action 52? Holy shit, man. I just can't say thank you enough. Like, there's. You, you, can't, you can't put into words how, like, awesome and great and. Just how much, it's just awesome. The fact that somebody would spend this kind of money just to give something like this to us is freaking incredible. Why would anybody give us two chodes of an Action 52? This is a legitimate question. Why would anybody give 
us two chodes and Action 52. Billy didn't deserve the Action 52, but it's one of those things where you can't get one of us something and not the other. Uh, because it, we, the other one will act like a complete and utter little little crybaby bitch, like a freaking seven year old. Like, where's mine? That's exactly what would happen. Because I'd have done it too. It's not anything on Billy. I could stink. I'd have given one to Eric, <coughs> just just to spite Billy and Scott. Scott was mad. Scott's face was priceless. Oh, I want to hear the the, uh, the what is the fucking prices right music right here right now. <laughs> look on Scott's face it was absolutely priceless. Now Scott had the same look on his face that Jay had on his face whenever I picked up the Flintstones. You see this shit? Yeah, I saw that shit, you piece of shit. Are you jelly? <laughs> no, I'm not jelly. You know, it, it burned a little to uh, to see those two scumbags get something like that. So it definitely it definitely got my uh, my blood boiling. I'm happy for them at the end of the day. I'm definitely glad that my friends have some games, but those undeserving scumbags. You know, usually when we shoot these interviews, we're shooting them in the perspective of things happening at the same time. I think it's important now to kind of go back and look into the past and kind of break the fourth wall and say that this MacFest in particular was um, bittersweet. Um, I was fortunate to actually spend a little bit more time, one final time with Ju Wario, Justin Carmichael. It was, it was, it was especially nice to see Justin. With the chaos going on at MagFest and everybody running around trying to get everything done and all their obligations and it was nice to just to just sit there and just shoot the breeze with them and talk about video games and favorite gaming series and stuff like that. Um, one of the biggest memories I will take back from our last time with Juario is the fact that during the pub quiz, which we came in second place, almost took first place once again two years in a row, was that he was wearing a Game Chaser shirt the entire time. The entire time he was wearing a Game Chaser shirt doing that. And he did that for no other reason than to just say thanks. Um, for, for us helping him out in the past and just wanting to do nothing other than to just, you know, kind of say, hey, Game Chasers, thank you. And, you know, I'm gonna try to try to plug you guys. And it was just, you know, it was just a good gesture on his part. He was just being a good friend is what that was. Yeah, you know, he, I'm sure he has like a million different shirts in his closet, yet he chose to wear a Game Chaser shirt. That's special. And he was just the same as always, you know, jubilant, um, Cordial, friendly, warm, inviting. I mean, I'm glad he was there. I'm glad he went. I'm glad I got to see him one more time. I mean, what, two weeks later, he, he wasn't with us anymore, so. Hey, everybody, I'm Jim Wario. And. Magfest was fun because it's it's basically hanging out with the boys time the arcade it's, it's always good had a great time hung out with the boys got some stuff better actually because we came back with some games I remember the first time we went to Magfest man that was a nightmare second time a little better this time definitely better with the games I I did I you know what I I don't think I bought anything at Magfest now that I think about it Everything I got at MAGFest was a gift, which is very appreciated, thank you. So a couple things I did get at the convention that were not cut on camera because for whatever reason, Melvore just decided he wasn't gonna roll this whole time. I started getting sleepy. I got Castlevania X, very good game, underrated, underrated Castlevania game. And I got Scat, another really good game on the NES. <laughs> He hooked me up on this. Like there was like somebody who was like a fan, and um, everybody else was selling this for like eighty bucks. And he had one. He had. He goes like, I got a stash out here in my backpack. You want to see it? And it's like a stash of what? He goes video games. Want to see? And I'm like, I don't know, man. 
There's a lot of people around us. We're kind of out in the open. He was like, it's, it'll be okay. Just look at it. They opened it up. I see Scat just sitting there and I pull it on and go, how much for this? He's like, 50 bucks. And I'm like, 40 bucks. And he's like, okay, Scat. Uh. So at this convention, there were no pat pranks, which um, was very quite disappointing. However, um, you know, both of Jay and I were under the weather a good portion of this convention. If you constantly just tear a man down, just constant, then he's more prone to snap. And then the joke would be on us. So we got to pace ourselves a little bit. You know, we can go one convention without giving the, the poor little guy a wedgie. But next convention, it's on. It comes down threefold. So Pat, watch out, Game Chasers are coming. There was no happenings, no goings-ons, no shenanigans, not on my part anyways. I was sick most of the convention. You take some fucking Excedrin and you fucking nut up and you go. On the way there, uh, I started feeling a little under the weather. And as the days in convention progressed, I progressively got worse and worse and worse. This was a weird ass convention, just all around. Like us being sick, things happening that I can't talk about on camera. I go back upstairs to, to go to sleep. I knock on the door. And mind you, there's like five other dudes in this room at this point. Nobody will get off their lazy butt and wake up to open the door for me. And I'm sitting there knocking and I'm knocking. So for about 15 minutes, I'm doing this until I give up. So I had no other choice. I went back down to the, to the game room. I, I played games as best I could until almost five o'clock in the morning. I was no part of this. You were in the room. How do you know I was in the room? Everybody was in the room. There were times where I wasn't in the room. There were times where I was sleeping in the floor of some random hotel room. <laughs> what the fuck went on at MedicBest? What did I miss? Just because they go on YouTube and they go, hey y'all, I knew I had to have it and I don't want to insult you, but here's a dollar. Can I have that rare game or whatever redneck nonsense they do, you know, or, or uh, Billy stinks up a car, or Jay has a PMS fit. That means that all of a sudden they're deserving of Action 52s. You're not stupid.